here with a alive and bubbly <laughs> Erika Penfold that I have talked a little bit with before this interview started. Erika is a international development expert at CHAPS, which stands for the Center for Age Prevention Studies. And I got very curious about your organization, Erika, because Guwell took an interest in you, and that means that you're a very efficient organization at preventing suffering and promoting health. So, hey, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for reaching out to us. That's really cool. Mm, and thank you for taking this interview. Now, if you were to explain CHAPS, the Center for Age Prevention Studies, to someone that is not aware of your cause, maybe some white male living in a country far away like Sweden, how would you, <laughs> <laughs> how would you put this? So very simply, uh, the Center for HIV AIDS Prevention Studies is all in the title. We look into better methods to preventing the spread of the HIV virus. And we look at better ways of communicating to people how they should be still testing to know their HIV status. And we do a lot of research into ways that can stop the spread of HIV. So our main project for that, uh, which is the reason why CHAP started, was looking at uh, voluntary medical male circumcision, which mm. is uh, an HIV prevention method that is uh, shown to be extremely effective at curbing the spread of HIV. I read about that and I got so curious. Why would a circumcision reduce the infection rate of uh, age, AIDS? So it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, can, can, can I just start before there? Could you explain, because to someone that is not aware, what is the difference between AIDS and HIV? So HIV is the virus, the yes. human immunodeficiency virus. Mm -hmm. AIDS is the actual disease that the virus turns into, which is acquired gotcha. immunodeficiency syndrome. So mm -hmm. if you have HIV, that will develop into full-blown AIDS if you don't take what is known as your antiretrovirals or your antiretroviral treatment, which mm -hmm. effectively reverses the spread of the virus and stops it before it turns into uh, what is known as AIDS or the syndrome or the disease, if you will. Mm. Um, yeah. I wish I had like a picture board up. I can like draw pictures and... I think, this is I think this is crystal <laughs> clear to me. So let's move on. Why would a circumcision reduce the infection rates? So, <laughs> I sound like a technical expert. So in the foreskin, there are a lot of cells that are very uh, open to trans the, the viral transmission. So very kind of receptive to the transmission of the virus. They're called Langerhans cells. And by removing the foreskin, that removes the uh, potential for infection into those cells, basically. Like mm. that's very simplistically put. Um, <laughs> I would have to like direct you to the website where there is a diagram and there's mm. like a very scientific explanation. But basically removing the foreskin equals uh, decreased transmission, put it that way. Okay. And what is CHAPS doing here? Are you researching on how big are the benefits of this or what do you want to do? What is your main purpose? So we're actually, so CHAPS is, um, CHAPS started out as primarily doing the circumcisions as a way to prevent the increased transmission of the virus. Uh -huh. We've been so successful in doing that in the past 10 years. We've established clinics and outreach and programs that um, we've uh, informed government policy on it. So we are moving out into other uh, areas at the moment. So we're doing a lot of HIV testing. Um, we do a lot of training. We do training and testing. We do training for people who want to do uh, VMMC. Um, so that was CHAPS's initial mandate. It started out in 2005, was a research project testing the effectiveness of VMMC. And we've kind of grown from there. Like CHAPS has become synonymous with HIV prevention as we've grown from doing VMMC to HIV prevention in, in a kind of broader sense mm. now. So it's been, how's my maths, like 14 years? Wow. And so for someone like me that is <clears throat> quite un unaware of this problem, how... How big is the HIV problem these days compared to maybe 10 years ago? What is happening? Oh, 
Oh, South Africa is a complicated story. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Overall, transmission has decreased, but at the same time, infections continue. So people are continually, if there are infections that occur every single day. So in South Africa, the rate of HIV is one of the highest in the world, which is why programs like, uh, like we do for CHAPS, that's why they still continue to be so important because as much as we've fought very hard to get people in our country onto ARVs and to get them testing and treating, it's still a problem. It still exists, you know? Um, so the government has started a, a program called We Are The Generation that will end HIV um, with the intention of stopping HIV transmission in its entirety eventually wow. but yeah it's it's a big one like <laughs> how probably do you think that can happen how probable is that <sighs> look i am an optimist and yes, i me too. think it can happen but this is exactly mm. why we need to talk to people overseas we need to continue to talk to people in south africa we need to continue working on hiv prevention constantly otherwise we're not going to so organizations like chaps the work we do we have to keep fighting because otherwise we mm. will not end the spread of hiv it'll continue mm. and as much as it is a chronic uh, controllable disease now if you take your arvs that's no excuse for the virus to continue to spread knowing that the danger it can put you in if you don't have treatment or if you don't want to test, if you want to stay ignorant of your HIV status. Mm. I like the fire in you when you speak about this cause. Now, <laughs> what do you think someone overseas like me, what do you think they don't know about your cause, but that you would like for them to know? Um, I think what would be most important to know is that HIV AIDS in South Africa is still a concern. It still needs support from people overseas. We have a lot of programs and projects that still need support from people that still need funding. Um, like donations are huge. We're running a program at the moment that asks people to donate for um, something called the Pele Box, which is providing access to your ARVs, if you will, your chronic medication by um, opening a locker, like using a a locker pad just to open that mm. to try and get funding for that is really difficult because there are so many programs in South Africa that require the same kind of support because we are as much as we're like uh, classified to be a middle income country the poverty divide is huge it's huge you have yeah. people living in palaces and then you have people living down the road in bare <laughs> poverty so support from the international community is critical for us mm. um, so for the example that I was talking about, the Pele Box initiative, it's a global giving campaign that we've set up and we've been asking people for the price of a cup of coffee in the US, which is not here because the exchange rate is so pretty bad. May I, may I come back to that? Because I want to yeah. talk about how people can help you uh, towards the end and leave, leave them with that. So first, I would like to know, oh, and by the way, I've, when I was in South Africa, I was shocked by how divided it was. I was in Johannesburg and the difference between the city and in one of these shack shack towns yeah yeah, yeah that's awful them. huge difference <laughs> yeah <laughs> so even if you're middle income you're very polarized for sure yes. so would you tell me about uh what kind of successes have you had so far with your organization what project are you the most proud of definitely our vmmc program that's we've had the biggest amount of success uh, and what does that stand for oh, sorry. voluntary male <laughs> circumcision voluntary medical male circumcision yes <laughs> so basically encouraging men who are not circumcised and who are willing to actively want to prevent themselves against the transmission of hiv to get circumcised okay. that's when our biggest most it's, we've had astounding success with that and we mm. have an established established presence with that program people know who chaps are because of that program what kind of success are we talking about i'd have to talk numbers and i don't have the numbers off hand so if you just give me two seconds to look at the <laughs> website oh wait no yes. i know the number it's i just designed this website i should know that <laughs> Please don't put this in the recording. <laughs> Please cut this part out. I've just been designing the website and I don't even know the numbers. <laughs> so we've had phenomenal success. We have uh, in 
the 10 years that we've been in existence, we've performed 639,000 circumcisions. Wow. We have tested over 84,000 people. Um, and we've established ourselves in pretty much every province in the country. We've got nine provinces. Mm. So that's huge. I mean, it's a population of like 55 million and providing that access. Wow. Also in clinics, in like much poorer areas, as you say, like in the townships, giving people access to a clinic that could potentially save their lives, I think is pretty big. Like I think CHAPS has really done a good job and I'm not just saying that because I work for CHAPS. I think that the work we have done is phenomenal mm. and to keep fighting to want to do that, whereas so many people kind of, eh, you know, HIV messaging, it's over. We are not giving up this fight. You know, we're saying with our programs, we're not giving up this fight. We're not letting HIV just continue to, spread through the country we want to stop this and mm. chaps has had a role in doing that so from its start as a research project in 2005 up till 2019 that's a hell of a lot of lives saved yeah wow and a lot of infections prevented indirectly almost Thank you. i guess that how big do you think that effect is compared to the direct person you are uh, preventing with a circumcision because that person would have sex with at least a couple of more people. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's, they also need to be aware of the fact that they should still use a condom mm -hmm. and they need to be aware of like risky behavior, you know, like, I mean, you've got to be blunt here. Like don't go and have sex with the perfect stranger after you've had a few drinks in a bar, you know, mm. you can have had your circumcision, but you still need to be careful. It's like anywhere in the world, you know, you don't just kind of, have sex with whoever you have to know who you're engaging with. And I mean, I think that's the risk is that HIV prevention is such, the messaging is there, you know, you can take PrEP, you can do a VMMC, you can get tested, you can use a condom, but if you continue to engage in risky behavior, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. And this is mm -hmm. where like, this is where CHAPS's education program is so important is that we want to educate people that, you have to still be aware. You have to walk in with your eyes open as you live and breathe, you know? Mm, got it. What is the risk for a uh, heterosexual man compared to a homosexual man to get infected? So um, key populations, the UN AIDS brought out uh, the most recent stats on the 5th of November. It's what do you most... mean by key populations? Because I wasn't really aware of that term. So I want to clarify it. So key populations are yes. people who are at higher risk of HIV transmission. Ah, got So it. that would be, um, so, well, the UN just brought out stats, which is actually really interesting, which I actually want to read them to you because I've got a tab open here. Yes. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Um, <laughs> so UN AIDS considers gay men and other men who have sex with men, sex workers, transgender people, people who inject drugs and prisoners, as the five main key populations group that are particularly vulnerable to HIV and lack adequate access to services, so healthcare and prevention services. Mm. So uh, homosexual men and men who have sex with men are, <laughs> they have accounted for, uh, well, key populations have accounted for 80% of new HIV infections, um, mm. which is a lot. Yeah. And for men who have sex with men, it's about, uh, the risk is 22% higher than any other population mm. because of risky behavior, you know, like there's a whole culture behind that. There's a whole dynamic behind that. Um, but the risk of HIV transmission is higher. Mm. And is that because homosexual men have, I've read somewhere that they have more sexual partners or is it because they weigh to have sex or what is the reason that they are key? So, I mean, there's, there's so many factors involved. I would have you here for longer than 20 minutes, but yeah. basically it's the mode of transmission of the virus is how they kind of think, how, how they have sex, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, there's also like a lot of, in a lot of different cultures, in a lot of different kind of um, gay cultures, if you will, there's like a lot of risky behavior. Like there's a lot of drug mm. taking, there's a lot of alcohol involved. It depends on where and who, I mean, you can't tie everyone with the same kind of brush, but the lifestyle risk can be considerably higher. And also the thinking is that, you know, HIV is not such a 
scary bear anymore you know mm. it's like it's treatable i can take arvs again this is not the point this is not what we want we want Got people it. to not get sick at all it's like saying Got oh it. well i'm gonna walk outside in a snowstorm in my costume because oh i could get sick but you know i might mm. not it's mm. the same kind of thinking you know you wouldn't go outside in the snow in a swimsuit why would you have sex without a condom if it was somebody that you weren't aware of of their status yeah I want to put the focus back on chaps because you talked about a successful project that you had, the circumcision program. What would be something great that could happen for you in a year or five years? So we have a three-year project prediction. <laughs> if we could expand our chaps programming to the rest of Southern Africa, uh -huh. um, there are established VMMC programs in other countries, but because of, chaps' successes in South Africa, if we could take the same kind of model and expand it to the rest of Southern Africa, also thinking big here to Western Africa and Eastern Africa, because mm. we've got a particularly good model that works. If we can mm. work hand in hand with other um, departments of health in other countries and other programs to keep getting people to circumcise. And then along with that, to expand into other sort of other areas of HIV, HIV prevention as well. So expanding testing, expanding access to PrEP, expanding mm. um, key populations programs because of the risk in key populations programs. Like if we could do that by 2022, I think we say we'd be doing a pretty damn good job. <laughs> gotcha. So spread out, do more for more people. Now we're coming up towards the end here. I had a lot of fun. I wish we could talk for two more hours. But the most important thing is what can someone do if they want to either get involved or spread your message? What would be important for you? Um, getting involved would be donating. Insert link here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Contribute to our program here. <laughs> and um, getting involved would be following us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, sharing the kind of content that we share, just having a general awareness, making that conversation bigger. So taking the conversation outside of South Africa and taking it to Sweden, you know, like, like having that kind of, did you know, in South Africa, there is a BMMC program. What does that even mean? You know, mm. having that kind of conversation that can dominate globally means that there is increased attention on what is still happening in poorer countries, you know, it is still mm. happening. Yeah. HIV is still a problem. We need people to talk about it, to be aware of it, to engage with it, to share that kind of messaging. Also take an interest in our country, you know, come and volunteer. Come here on a holiday, the exchange rate is favorable. It's about 17 rand to, 17 rand to the euro. It's mm. very cheap for you to come here. Come and volunteer, come and see what happens in the poorer areas. The more exposure and attention that we get to our causes the more success that we have in changing people's lives and making sure that we can end the transmission of hiv you stop people getting sick Whew, your fire is contagious i'm almost i'm getting hot over here <laughs> erica <laughs> this has been so much fun i'm so grateful yeah, that you <laughs> <laughs> never i'm so grateful that you wanted to be a part of this. Thank you so much for your energy and your charisma. And I wish you all the best with your cause. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the chance to talk to you about it. It's amazing. Mm. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>